Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Goza Podcast. We just did one on the Rolling Stones and we enjoyed it so much that we want to keep this train rolling, but um, on the Rolling Stones. Uh, what do we have for our next Rolling Stones video? Okay, so today we're taking a look at Sympathy for the Devil Live Ultima 1969. Okay. Uh, 69. This is a historical event, a historical concert. Um, a few people died. <gasps> yeah, so the Wikipedia says um, Meredith Hunter Jr. was an American man who was killed at the 1969 Altamont Free Concert. During the performance by the Rolling Stones, Hunter approached the stage and was driven off by members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club who Ooh. were providing security and had agreed to prevent yes. members of the audience from mounting the stage. I heard about this. I didn't know it was this. He subsequently returned to the stage area, drew a revolver, and was stabbed and beaten to death by Hells Angels member Alan Pissarro. The incident was caught on camera and became a central scene in the Maisel's Brothers documentary, Gimme Shelter. So he had a gun on him? Yeah. Okay, I, I, never, I never heard of that part. I didn't know that part either, so. Wow. All right, and then it is said that the Rolling Stones never played this song live again. Because, think about the title, right? What's the title? Sympathy for the Devil, okay? Oh. And so it's one of those creepy things, you know, how blues and rock and roll music is, you know, closely associated with mythology yes. and um, and the devil himself. Quite synonymous. So the Rolling Stones, thinking that they were edgy, wrote a song in a first-person pers perspective of the devil, played the song live. Oh, Somebody, someone got killed. Yeah, and they during. And they hung it up. They Is never this going to show in the video? Or? Um, you don't really You can't see tell because it's happening, happening somewhere else. Right. It's like, to, like, yeah, just watch. You'll see. But there won't be, like, any violence okay. that will show on stage. So It's PG-13, right? Yeah. Okay. Shall we? Yes. And if you like what you see so far, subscribe, hit that like button, and go check out our original tunes. Let's get into the Rolling Stones, though. and sisters, brothers and sisters. Come on now. That means everybody just cool out. You watch it after the Will show. you cool out, everybody? I know. I'm here. Everybody be cool now. Come on. All right. How are we doing over there? All right. Can we still make it down the front? Is there anyone there that's hurt? Huh? Everyone all right? Okay. All right. I think we're uh, cool. We can go. We always have something very funny happens when we start that number. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There she is. Please allow me to hit 
people, I mean, who's fighting what for? Who's fighting and what for? Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting? We don't want to fight. Okay. All you guys. All you guys who grew up in the 70s. Or youngsters in the 70s. You guys partied harder than anybody else. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, they took it to the next level. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that was intense. Kind of speechless. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like, like the 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 vibe of the seventies were there, the music, the chill jams. But then it's like, it really showed like, sort of the two energies that were so prominent in the seventies, like really awesome music and this whole freedom culture that revolution, just yeah, re yeah revol and that then at the same time like intense violence and war and like and dark, opposition right police political. fighting civilians and i don't know just the energy was like so conflicting very much so yeah very conflicting and yeah it was a great representation of the times mm -hmm. that's why the 70s are so beautiful right i mean they were just so oh. The forefront yes. of so much going on. Right, right. And um, it's sad because, you know, today it's like that violence and that separation is still here. Mm -hmm. But there's not a, you know, underlying, like, tone to bring us together like the music was. Like, the, right. you know, initial drug use was. Yeah, like the partying the, was. Like, it was sure. meant to bring us all together to get, but while those things are still going on, you know. For um, sure as kind of an answer, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're missing that today. Yeah. Yeah, there's not as much of a drive in the younger generations for like peace and, I don't know, freedom as there were in the youngster generation of the 70s. Yeah, and... I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that just my perception or...? Well, no, I mean, you know, everyone identifies so heavily these days with a certain group, you know, that mm -hmm. you can't, it, you can't unite if, if you identify so much, you know, you can't, right. you can't all the time be a Republican or all the time be a Democrat, you know, you got to right. be a human being and, and that's what we all have in common is. We're all on this planet together. Right. Like, it was more simple back in the 70s. Like, it was basically like, let's not go to war. Let's have peace. Let's have fun and and play music and go to concerts. And now it's like, it's so much more complicated than that. Yeah, there's a lot more um, propaganda and a lot more voices trying to get your ear and your attention you know and and social media and mm. this that and the other and call me naive but i still believe rock and roll can save us for sure and it's hard because music has been sort of um weaponized or at least infiltrated to be used as sort of a tool rather than like actual you know right because music is so powerful that it it you know it can be a conduit of whatever the intention behind it is you know and so mm -hmm. corporations or politicians or what have you that have an agenda know that they can use music as a vessel to their own yeah and and even to not even get so tenfold hattie on it it's kind of just like it's all about money at the end of the day. That's no tinfoil hat. It's like, okay, if we put out this artist and we give them songs to write and how to sing it and the producers set everything, we get most of the profit. And you're going to do exactly what we say. Whereas bands back then were 100% of the show. Yeah, and so they had to steal from these artists to make money. Yep. And so when you have something that's real, it's going to be so much better than something that's procured and planned 
um, and just it's going to be more generic. Right. Today they so, just want to sell McDonald's. So it's hard. It's hard for rock and roll or anything that's real and raw to find a place because all of the spots are taken by planned, you know, procured. Exactly. Uh, artists, musicians. And you know, I hate to always bring up Taylor Swift. Don't but, do it. You're you gonna know. get us hate. <laughs> She is the ultimate McDonald's, you know. She's, just because McDonald's is highly popular does not yeah. mean that it's healthy for you, does not mean that it's quality, does not yeah. mean that it's good, and it's not even that cheap. So, there you have it, folks. Yeah, we, we need to definitely bring back rock and roll, um, or at least the spirit of rock and roll. Raw, um, unhinged. Expression. Yep, and that's what we aim for. Goza, our music. That is truly what we aim for, and that's why we do it. I want to know if anyone has been to this concert or any Rolling Stones concerts. Please let us know in the comments. Tell us your story. I love reading those stories. Yes. On that note, we'll see you in the next one.